Watkins and the cartography lead at Minna. And we're going to talk about uh, querying the earth with a, a thing we developed called Earth Tables. Um, so we had a lot of internal use cases at Meta, uh, developers, engineers uh, who wanted to use OpenStreetMap data that you know we use a lot with daylight, and you know just wanted to be like I need all the parks in the world from OSM, but if you worked with OSM tagging, it was a high barrier to entry there. Uh, getting all the parts could be rather complicated. You'd have to know a bunch of different tagging methodologies and take, you know map them differently in different parts of the world. Uh, a lot of people inside of Meta use base maps, it's kind of a cross-functional tool for people to do all kinds of work. Um, and we needed to develop something that was simple for people to use of course, needed to be a single table, something easy to understand for people who didn't know about maps, didn't know about OSM, just wanted data. So we developed this thing called Earth Tables. Uh, it's an extension of our uh, existing process of uh, cleaning OpenStreetMap data and putting it out as part of the Daylight project. Uh, so we took our multiple years of uh, cartographic um, uh, data, like making map tiles really simple, uh, for our, our maps, and we took all that kind of methodology and logic we had built into our uh, tile schemas and just kind of pushed it down the pipeline a little bit so people could take advantage of that without having to know how to query tiles and all that. So we just kind of converted it to a table. Um, so you can see a quick example here of uh, what a building, you know, this building has two tag warehouse levels. We've given it all kinds of stuff. We know it's industrial, you know, it's a warehouse. In general, we'll do a couple of parts here. Uh, so Earth Table fits into all of our maps at Meta that are served out across Instagram, Facebook, WhatsApp, Mapillary, a ton of other places. It's available to the community as uh, an extension to Daylight. Um, and you know, OSM users who contribute to OSM, contribute to Daylight, contribute to Earth Tables. And we've also done a bunch of part of uh, graphic improvements to it uh, so that you can actually make uh, global base maps with it. So uh, we've validated like building height information so you don't get like 400 meter tall buildings and stuff. We simplified uh, place names so that, you know, if it's like urban settlement local and we've developed classes for all those. Um, the Bing Tao Qua key to every feature. Uh, which is important for like doing a bunch of quick searching. Uh, added a lot of Boolean uh, evaluations, like this is indoor, this is intermittent, this is bridge, just true falses for a lot of those instead of having to know several uh, ad combinations. Yeah. So where can you get the daylight earth table? Um, daylight and the earth table, the daylight earth table are available um, as part of the registry of, or they are part of the registry of open data at AWS. Um, so these are hosted uh, on AWS. Um, and the idea is you can work with them in situ in the cloud. So yeah, there's some really big parquet files on S3, but you don't have to download that or worry about that. You can just access them right there in the cloud. Um, and you're only uh, paying for the data that you scan, um, which is a very, uh, nice pricing models would be very cheap to do some of this um, analysis and extraction. So we'll take a look here. You can go to uh, dailymap.org slash earth, um, see more information about each of the themes and um, there's some like, feature counts and what's actually in there. Uh, this is all it takes to get started. So you do have to have an AWS account to access these uh, files, the parquet files that are on S3. Um, but you go to the Athena you know, query editor, copy and paste this, uh, query from the um, website and the run and that's it. So we can start to uh, look at the data here. Um, here we've got the query at the top. We're extracting uh, from the data earth table the this building, um, and we want to know uh, buildings that are in land use areas. So here's an example where we've gone through and pre-computed for every building. Um, and attach the tag to that building on what the actual tag is in OSM, if there is any, for the land use that it's sitting on. So um, we've done that for every building uh, and all the land use in, in OSM. 
Um, and we can see we get a building that gives us a general building. Um, or do, do the stagnant building equals yes, comes into our class as a general, um, and then some of the original source tags. And then we also have the quantity attached to everyone and some information about the building. And you can do some really quick analysis, like with the clock keys, um, which is really, which is really nice. So using like in clock keys, this is surface area of uh, golf courses uh, around the world. It's kind of fun. I don't know if Japan had so many golf courses. Uh, learned that this morning. So, thank you, Joe. <laughs>